if our heart is rooted in faults such as desire, fame, profit, or anger. We do not have to find ways to get rid of each fault." End quote. This is just to give us some examples. We have millions of faults, but we do not have to find each and every one of them. Those practitioners specializing in abiding by the precepts do so by disciplining their behavior. They think about what went wrong. They think about how many mistakes they committed every day. They carefully think of each and every one and then correct them one by one. They not only reflect on their behavior daily, but also keep a record of their merits and faults. This method of record keeping can work very well for some. Each of us has a different personality and character related to our habits accumulated over infinite lifetimes. Mahayana practitioners, however, do not practice in this way. On the other hand, Theravada practitioners are very happy to practice this method and derive benefit from it. Different people, different characters, thus different principles, different methods. There are many practitioners in China, Tibet, Korea, and Japan who practice Mahayana Buddhism. However, in South Asia, Thailand, and Sri Lanka, most practitioners are Theravada. They end their erroneous ways and practice good deeds to change their behavior. Whereas Mahayana practitioners refrain from wrongdoing and practice kind deeds through reasoning and changing from the heart. This is to cultivate from the heart, the root, the origin, from the text. All we need is a sincere, kind heart and the willingness to practice good deeds. As long as our heart is virtuous and kind, then naturally our mind will not generate any improper thoughts. This is an excellent method, simple and clear. However, if we do not have true wisdom, we still cannot achieve. Why? Because of doubts. Because of wondering how it could be possible for us to eradicate all of our offenses that we have committed. We doubt. We do not believe we cannot accept. When we hear that we are to concentrate our mind on Buddha Amitabha and to seek birth into the Western Pure Land, we still think that since we have committed so many wrongdoings, how can we possibly go to the Western Pure Land? We would be ashamed to see Buddha Amitabha. Not only this, we would not even dare to pay our respects to the image of the Buddha in a way place, thinking that our offenses are simply too heavy. It would be embarrassing to see him. If we think this way, then it would be better to regret and reform through behavior 
For at least, if we corrected one fault when we discovered it, our minds would be more settled. Those who can accept the Pure Land method possess good roots, good fortune, causes, conditions. If we did not already have the best root nature, it would be impossible for us to accept the Buddha name chanting method. Once we do accept it and practice earnestly, then we can neutralize the transgressions accumulated over infinite lifetimes with the merit of our chanting. The Pure Land is a gathering place for the assembly of utmost virtuous people. Once we are born into it, we are a member of this assembly and are equal to such virtuous people as universal worthy bodhisattva, great strength bodhisattva, great compassion bodhisattva, and great wisdom bodhisattva. As Mr. Nian Zhu Huang stated in his commentary on the Infinite Life Sutra, the Pure Land Method is for sentient beings of supreme root nature. Who are those with this supreme root nature? Those who believe, vow, and practice to be born into the Pure Land. Master Huai Nung only taught those with supreme root natures. However, his students, although they had achieved, could not maintain their level of achievement. Pure Land practitioners with utmost capabilities will never regress for they have perfectly achieved the three non-regressions. The students of Master Hui Nung achieved the three non-regressions, but not perfectly. The Pure Land method is unsurpassed. We are unbelievably fortunate to have encountered it. But it is no accident that we have done so. It is due to the maturing of our good roots, good fortunes, causes, and conditions that we have accumulated for infinite eons. And this is why we have encountered this method. To practice good deeds with one sincere mind means to have no wandering thoughts, no second thought. Proper and virtuous thought is the first thought, is the absolute and ultimate proper thought. Also, it is to chant Amitabha, to practice constant mindfulness of Buddha Amitabha, and to wholeheartedly seek birth into the Pure Land. The most marvelous way to reform and reduce our karmic obstacles is to have no wandering thoughts. It does not mean having no proper thoughts. If we are without proper thoughts, then we are ignorant. Wandering thoughts are discriminatory thoughts and attachments. It is not easy for ordinary people to achieve the state of no wandering thoughts. However, 
everyone can achieve this by practicing the Buddha name chanting method. What is meant by proper thought revealed? It is Amitabha. Amitabha is the most truthful and ultimate proper thought. The only important issue in our life is to constantly maintain proper thought, not to cling to deviated and erroneous thoughts. We would do well to be constantly mindful of Buddha Amitabha, day and night, without interruption. If we can continue our cultivation in this way, then we will receive wonderful results after three months. If we constantly maintain mindfulness of Buddha Amitabha, with this one thought, we are assured of reducing our wandering thoughts. It is impossible for us not to have any wandering thoughts. Certainly we will have some. Do not be afraid of them. Thoughts of Buddha Amitabha will occupy us the most. Six or seven out of ten thoughts are of Buddha Amitabha, with only three or four wandering thoughts. No matter. But if we are not mindful of Buddha Amitabha, then our minds will be filled with wandering thoughts. If we can continue constant mindfulness of Buddha Amitabha for three months, letting the thoughts of Buddha Amitabha increase, our wandering thoughts will decrease. Then we will be at ease and free in spirit. Our minds will become more serene and our savoring the Dharma joy will indicate that our karmic obstacles have been reduced. In the past, our minds were filled with afflictions and worries. Our futures were darker and darker. Now, we can become happy and more wise. Our lives will be interesting and filled with confidence and our futures will be bright. Everything will change as we continue chanting for half a year. We will receive even better results. This will serve to increase our determination. Anyone who really wants to go to the Pure Land will find that it is achievable after three years of cultivation, of constant mindfulness, of Buddha Amitabha. Many people have achieved this. Others have said that they cannot practice this method for they will die in three years. What can we say? Frankly, many people do not practice this method, for they are still clinging to this world, unwilling to give up reincarnation in the six realms. This is short-sightedness. They do not know the happiness and joy of the Pure Land is peerless. Even human and heavenly realms and all other Buddha lands cannot compare with it. Such a wonderful place and some people do not want to go there. They prefer to stay here and remain mired 
in suffering, what can we say? Nothing. People with true aspiration and profound insight need to know that it is the perfect and complete accomplishment to single-mindedly seek birth into the Pure Land and be with Buddha Amitabha. Naturally, we will set our mind and body free. We will let go of wandering and discriminatory thoughts and attachments and rid ourselves of these forever. There is nothing worthy of worry. There is nothing worthy of greed. We follow in accord with conditions and do not seek affinities in our daily lives. How happy and free we will be for we will have truly achieved. This is what worldly people are unable to think of. To turn, <clears throat> to turn affliction into awakening. To live or die at will. Not just to pass away when our time is up, but to leave when we choose. If we feel that we need to remain in this world longer. There is no harm in doing so. However, there is only one reason to remain. If we still have affinities with those who are here, then we need to stay here to encourage them to go to the Pure Land with us. In this, time, in this way, our time spent here will be to help them. If it were just for ourselves, then we would go early. The purpose of staying here is to help all sentient beings, to propagate the Pure Land method, if there is someone who can assume the task of advocating this method to continue this teaching, then we can pass on the work to him or to her. We can leave first and let them carry on this great matter of guiding sentient beings to transcend the cycle of birth and death. What freedom this truly is. Thus, everyone needs to know that those who have attained an achievement and left this world in three years had no Dharma affinities, had nobody else to teach. They would certainly leave and not delay here any longer. Those who cannot leave have no choice, have no alternative but to stay. Those who are able will go. As long as we single-mindedly chant the Buddha's name without doubt, Without intermingling, without interruption, we are assured of attaining achievement in three years. Consider the student of Master Dishien, who solely chanted Namo Amitabha and was ignorant of everything else. After becoming a monk, the Master did not require him to be ordained, for he was concerned that the monk would not be able to withstand the hardship of the long training session due to his advanced years. Also, he was uneducated and illiterate, and so 
it was not necessary for him to attend the lectures. He did not even remain in the temple to work with everybody else. If he lost his temper because others made fun of him, it would have been very bad, very serious to have done so. Consequently, his master sent him to the countryside to live alone in an abandoned temple. From dawn to dusk, he chanted Amitabha for three years. He knew in advance when he would die. How did he accomplish this? As Mr. Liao Fan told his son, as long as the mind is virtuous and good, then naturally it will not generate any improper thoughts. This is to achieve from sincerely chanting the Buddha's name. Average people cannot compare to him. He succeeded and was born into the Pure Land because he did not have the ability to teach anyone else. He was illiterate with no knowledge of Buddhism, but he attained achievement and was born into the Pure Land. He did not suffer any illness or pain but knew in advance his time of death. When he died, he was standing and remained so for three days, waiting for his master to come to make final arrangements. He is a role model for Pure Land practitioners. Others may say that the Pure Land is not a good practice, but what other me method can show an example such as this? What other method allows us to be clear-headed at the time of death, enables us to remain standing waiting for others for three days to take care of our funeral arrangements. This is truly our testimony. The method that we teach to everyone is to single-mindedly chant Ami Tafa. While our body remains in this world, we have no choice but to make a living to support ourselves. But after work, we can let go and be mindful of the Buddha. When we are working, concentrate on the job. Once we are finished, start chanting. Even while we, are, while we are at work, if there is no thinking required, we can silently chant or play a cassette and chant along with it. While our work requires thinking, we can temporarily lay aside our chanting to concentrate on our work. When thinking is not required, we again chant or listen to the chanting we would do well to understand that chanting Amitabha is the greatest issue in our lives. Everything else is unimportant, not really worthy of real concern. This is the way to regret our wrongdoings to change from our minds, to change from our hearts. People who know how to practice do so from the root, from the basics, from the text. Demons do.
do not appear in bright sunlight. This is the essence, the key for us to turn over a new leaf. All mistakes stem from the heart. Therefore, we change from the heart. It is like getting rid of a poisonous tree. If we want to put an end to it, we uproot it altogether so that it cannot grow again. Why exert ourselves to no avail by pulling out its leaves one by one and cutting it twig by twig? End quote. An example of changing through behavior is to cut down the branches, the twigs, one by one, to pull off the leaves, one by one. To change from the heart is to uproot the entire tree. Thus, we need to know what is the key. What method do we use to change ourselves? If everybody can memorize, follow, and uphold the teachings of Master O.E., then everybody will learn to change from the heart. In so doing, all the transgressions accumulated over infinite past eons can be absolved. Amitabha can reform all wrongdoings. Chanting in this way, we perfectly practice all virtuous teachings, be they worldly or Buddhist. Cultivating one is cultivating all. Changing one is changing all. Truly inconceivable. We all need to deeply believe. Many people have doubts, thinking that this method is not very reliable or thinking there is a better one. We can smile after we hear this, place our palms together and chant Amitabha and not be bothered from the text. The best way to reform our faults is through cultivating our hearts. If we are willing to cultivate our hearts, then it is possible to purify our faults right away." End quote. The foremost way for us to change is from the heart. If we were able to let go of everything and chant continuously Amitabha for three months, six months, our minds would be purified. The result would come forth. As for people learning to lecture on the Buddhist sutras, we encourage them to learn just one sutra. By reciting one sutra daily, we can attain purity of mind in three to five months. If we were learning many sutras simultaneously, we would not attain purity of mind in the same amount of time. Thus, our learning would be useless. The key to the problem is to specialize. Not many people realize this. When our practice of Buddhism is genuine, the more we practice, the more purified our hearts will become. We will have 
fewer afflictions, reduced ignorance, increased wisdom. Our faces will glow with health. This is the effect of genuine wisdom revealed. We need to keep firmly in mind what Master Lian Shi said. Let others learn all of the great Buddhist canon. We need to remember that the books in our library are for others to read, not for ourselves. Why do we need to let them see so many books? Because they do not believe, so we help them to read. If they want to travel many roads, let them. We will take a different road, a shorter road. They change their ways through action, but they only change on appearance, and then only minor details. We change from our hearts. This is because wrongdoings originate from our hearts. From here, we can see the difference in viewpoints and the degree of wisdom between the two methods from the text. If my heart is pure, I can recognize and stop an improper thought as soon as it arises. The immoral idea will disappear the moment I am conscious of it." End quote. This talks of changing from the heart. Wandering thoughts are afflictions, are karmic obstacles. As soon as they start to arise, we recognize them immediately. Once we discern them, we immediately change them into Amitabha. As a wandering thought arises, when our senses come into contact with the external world, whether we like or dislike something, whether the wandering thought is good or bad, we immediately replace it with the second thought of Amitabha. We can chant either Amitabha or Namo Amitabha. Once our mind has given rise to a wandering thought, it is awakening when our second thought is of Buddha Amitabha. It is to be awakened and not deluded. The first thought is one of delusion, but the second thought is one of awakening. To gain the tremendous effect the awakening needs to be immediate. The delusion must not be allowed to increase, to grow. In so doing, we will truly uncover our wisdom. If we are able to persevere like this for six to 12 months, we will attain wisdom. Our eyes will be brighter. Our six senses will be intelligent and sharp. We will be able to understand completely anything that we come into contact with. Others may have to read numerous books, reference materials, other forms of information throughout the world to be able to judge, and still may not reach the right conclusions. Whereas, having uncovered 
our wisdom, we may only need to see something once to totally and perfectly understand. Ordinary people do not have this ability, for this is the ability of a bodhisattva. The Buddha teaches us to seek true wisdom. When we have the heart to propagate the true teachings, the key is for us to harbor sincerity, purity of mind, and deep concentration. There is really no need to search reference materials to learn how to lecture. We do need compassion. We do not want to use our six consciousnesses of discrimination, for we may misinterpret the tr meaning of the Buddha's words. As teacher has said many times, there is no meaning within the sutras. All the Buddhas will protest that they have been wronged if we ponder the meanings within the sutras. Therefore, we only need to honestly, sincerely recite them without analyzing their meanings, without seeking their meanings. We just need to honestly recite to purify our minds and uncover the wisdom already in our self-nature. If someone asks us the meanings within the sutras, we can tell them that the meanings are infinite. By not purposely seeking the meanings, the infinite meanings will be revealed. A revelation from the with wisdom within our self-nature. Having done so, when we talk on the sutra, we would naturally do it perfectly. Whether the talk is profound or simple, short or long. After lectures, when people ask us what we said, we really would not know. When no questions are asked, there is no meaning. With questions, the meaning arises. The, genera the generation of infinite meanings is to benefit others. Having no meanings is to benefit ourselves. Self-benefit is cultivating a pure mind with no thoughts arising other than that of Amitabha. Lecturing on sutras to explain the teachings is to benefit others, not ourselves. Thus, there is no need to remember what we just lectured. By not knowing, our minds are pure. We would do well to constantly maintain purity of mind. Purity is awakening. Pollution is the mind that is moved, the mind that has wandering thoughts, attachments. Having no wandering thoughts is original awakening. When we are chanting Amitabha, it is genuine practice. 
for our every thought initiates awakening in accordance with original awakening. Indeed, the Buddha name method, chanting method, is inconceivable. Thus, for sutras, we only need to recite the Infinite Life Sutra and the Amitabha Sutra. There really is no need to recite any others. When we lecture on the teachings to benefit others, we can read the commentaries on the Infinite Life Sutra. We can also read the commentaries on the Amitabha Sutra, written by Master Lian Chi and Master Oe. The one by Master Lian Chi is very well written, perfect, just as Master Oe praised it to be, broad and profound. Reading the commentary on the Amitabha Sutra would be the same as reading the great Buddhist canon. Master Lian Shi covered all teachings, worldly and Buddhist, for reference citations. Thus the context, content indeed, is abundant and enriched. Master Yuan Yin and Master Bao Jing also wrote explanatory notes on the essential explanation of the Amitabha Sutra by Master Oe. These four commentaries would be enough reference material to propagate the Pure Land teachings. The commentary on the Infinite Life Sutra was written by Mr. Nian Zhu Huang. Once we thoroughly comprehend these four commentaries, not only would we thoroughly comprehend all the Pure Land Sutras, but also the great Buddhist canon and the teachings of all the Buddhist schools. If we study many schools, our minds will become scattered. With scattered minds, naturally our wisdom will not be uncovered. These four commentaries are sufficient for those who volunteer to propagate the Pure Land School. There is no need to look into additional references. Do not think that because we have read less that we would not have enough lecture materials to teach. With shorter, more concise reference materials, we would require less time. Why struggle to talk for a certain length of time. When we speak for a shorter time, we will only speak of the essence. The more the essence is refined, the more wonderful it is. Each moment will be valuable, as we do not waste any of the audience's precious time. If we compile a talk using many reference material as if to make up a platter of hors d'oeuvres, we will not be able to truly savor any one particular taste. This wastes our time and energy as well as that of others. From the text. If we are unable to succeed at reforming a fault through changing the heart, then I will try at the level of understanding, knowing the reason why I need to make the change. If I cannot succeed with this, 
then I will try to reform by changing through action and force the thought to dissipate. The best way is by cultivating the heart and understanding the reasons behind the need to change. The alternative way is forcing ourselves not to commit the wrongdoing again. Sometimes all three methods have to be used to succeed at reforming a fault. It is foolish to dismiss the best way, which is to reform from the heart, and to be attached to the inferior way of reforming through action." End quote. If we are unable to achieve using the best method, then we have no choice but to try to use the second way, to try to change from understanding, to know the reasons why we need to change. When something happens, we need to think logically of why it happened. After we understand the reasoning, our mind will naturally become calm. Our wandering thoughts will lessen and our anger will dissipate. However, if as beginners who have little sense of reasoning, we cannot succeed through understanding what can we do. We can use an even more basic level, the level of trying to reform by changing through action, and in this way force the thought to dissipate. We need to put a check on our every action find our thoughts, faults, and correct them one by one. If we cannot do this, we will find ourselves in trouble creating even more negative karma, bringing even greater suffering upon ourselves. Therefore, Beginners were required to strictly abide by the precepts, for they did not understand the reasoning. The spirit of abiding by the precepts is to stop and refrain from committing further wrongdoings. Mr. Liao Fan said that the best way to reform is to cultivate the heart and understand why we need to change. An alternative is to force ourselves not to commit the wrongdoing again. When we attain purity of mind and understand the reasoning, we will be able to uphold and maintain good conduct, which is the best way to change. Until we do this, all three methods may have to be used to correct a fault. This indeed is achieving self-cultivation while influencing others, for we attain purity of mind while serving as a role model for beginners to follow, thus not making any mistakes. Mr. Liao Fan said, it is foolish to dismiss the best way, which is to reform from the heart and be attached to the inferior way of reforming through action. Some people are very rigid about abiding by the precepts. They are attached to the behavior, to the formality of cultivation, and are unable to raise the level of their state of mind. Actually, the precepts are very flexible. 
When we uphold them, we need to understand the logic behind them. And that is <clears throat> and that is even more important that as we abide by them, that we strive to attain purity of mind. The purpose of upholding the precepts is to attain deep concentration, which is purity of mind. If we were overly attached to the formality of upholding the precepts, then it would be difficult for us to achieve deep concentration because we could not differentiate and would be attached to the appearance of abiding by them daily. How could we succeed in this way? Only by severing our discriminatory thoughts and attachments are we able to attain deep concentration. This concentration is still a means, a way. Thus, we should not attach to attaining, or we would still be unable to uncover our wisdom. Theravada practitioners are attached to achieving concentration. The Buddha talked about the mind state of arhats in the Surangama Sutra. They have attained the ninth level of concentration and are partial to the state of empty nirvana. They are attached and cannot let go and thus they guard the gentle and serene state. When Theravada practitioners try to sever their afflictions, virtually all their change is through behavior. Sometimes they will concurrently use changing through behavior with reasoning. Thus it takes seven cycles of birth between the human and heaven realms for a practitioner who has attained the level of arhat to sever their attachments. The sutras tell us that trying to sever our attachments by changing through behavior is as difficult as trying to cut off a raging waterfall that is 40 miles wide. As was said earlier, this is as difficult as trying to cut down a tree one leaf at a time. This is a good example of why changes should be made from the heart. How should we proceed? We could try to pluck off all the leaves one by one, cut off each twig one by one, each branch one by one, and then slowly dig up the roots. But this would be difficult and very time consuming. Wise people would go straight to the root to uproot the tree. Then the leaves would naturally wither and fall. So why bother to pluck the leaves and cut off the twigs one by one when we can change? Why change through behavior when we can change through reasoning, through the changing from the heart? As Mr. Liao Fan said, the best way is cultivating from the heart while understanding the reasons behind the need to change. Amitabha, thank you.